What does it mean for triangles to be similar? Given the following similarity statement, triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. This similarity statement is super helpful because it tells us which part of one triangle corresponds to which part of the other triangle. So this similarity statement is telling us that angle A corresponds to angle D in the other triangle. Angle B corresponds to angle E and angle C corresponds with angle F. From the diagram, we can see that the measure of angle A is 37 degrees. The measure of angle D is also 37 degrees. Hmm, interesting. The measure of angle B is 90 and E is also 90 degrees. The measure of angle C, hmm, I don't see a measure there, but what do we know about the angles in a triangle? That's right. They add up to 180, triangle sum theorem. Knowing that, we can subtract the other two angle measures from 180 and conclude that the measure of angle C is 53 degrees. And also, the measure of angle F will be 53 degrees. The similarity statement also gives us important information about which sides correspond with which. For example, the first two letters right here, A, B, that side will correspond to the first two letters here, D, E. Our next two letters, B, C, that side will correspond with E, F. And finally, your last letter and your first letter, C, A, and F, D, those sides will correspond. Let's label the measures of the sides so that we can determine if there are any patterns with corresponding sides. Do you see a pattern with the corresponding sides? You may notice that this triangle has side lengths that are twice as long as this triangle. But if you didn't notice that, is there a way that you could tell? Go ahead and write them as a fraction. Four divided by two. Big divided by small is what I like to do. I get two. Three divided by its corresponding side length, which is 1.5. So three divided by 1.5, is that two? Yes, it is. Take the big side length and divide its corresponding five divided by 2.5 is also two. So yes, the side lengths of the bigger triangle twice as long as the side lengths of the smaller triangle. This means that the side lengths are proportional because when I put them into the fractional form, big over small, I end up getting the same scale factor. I end up getting the same answer. What can you conclude about the angles of a similar triangle? The corresponding angles of similar triangles, it looks like they are equal. So we're going to write they are congruent. The corresponding angles of similar triangles are congruent. The angles are of equal measure. What can we conclude about the sides of similar triangles? Well, the sides are not equal, right? Four is not equal to two. But the ratio of the sides is equal, which means that the corresponding side lengths are proportional. So in terms of our triangle, the measure of angle A was congruent to the measure of angle D. The measure of angle B was congruent to the measure of angle E. And the measure of angle C was congruent to the measure of angle F, its corresponding angle. And our side lengths can be set up as ratios. Side AB divided by side DE is equal to when I take side BC and divide it by side EF, 
It's also equal to CA divided by side FD. So we can see that our angles are congruent and the ratios of our sides are equal. This can help us solve for missing parts of similar triangles based on the patterns that similar triangles display. Example 1. If triangle ALE is similar to triangle DLP, solve for side length X. First of all, I want to look at the similarity statement because it's going to tell me which angles and sides correspond to one another. Angle A corresponds to angle D. Angle L from the ALE triangle corresponds with angle L from the DLP triangle. And angle E corresponds with angle P. Now determine which side lengths correspond to which sides. Side AL, since A and L are the first two letters, that is going to correspond to side DL. So this one will correspond with this one. Then your next two letters, LE, those will correspond with LP. And finally, EA, our last and our first letter, will go with PD. Now, I usually like to start with the bigger triangle. Um, it may be kind of difficult to tell which one is the bigger triangle, but if you notice, this green side is bigger than the corresponding green side on the other triangle. So it looks like the one on the right is the bigger triangle. So we know that the corresponding sides have equal ratio. So we're going to set up a proportion very similar to this that will give me an equation. First, let's start with 12. 12 over 8. Remember, big over small is the way that I like to set it up. You can do it the other way, but make sure that you're staying consistent. And then our side with x would be corresponding to the side with 6. And the side with 6 on this triangle corresponds to the side with 4 on the other triangle. Now we don't actually need an equation with two equal signs. You could solve this equation or you could solve this equation. Either one will give you the correct answer. So let's try it out. 12 over 8 is equal to x over 6. How do you solve a proportion? Well, what we're going to do is cross multiply. So it needs to be numerator times denominator is equal to denominator times numerator. 72 equals 8x, so x equals 9. Now, I did say that this would give you an equivalent answer for x, so let's try it out x times 4 is equal to 6 times 6. And when we divide both sides by 4, we get x equals 9. And we did actually have units on this problem. It was 9 feet. Now, if you weren't given the similarity statement, would you still know that all three angles are congruent? Well, we could easily see that angle A is 63 degrees. It corresponds to angle D, which is also 63 degrees. Same with E and P, both 56 degrees. But how do we know that the angles that are formed at L are congruent? So this angle right here and this angle, how do we know those are congruent? They are vertical angles. So yes, angle A, L, E. Remember, you need to use three letters to describe that angle since there are multiple angles at this intersection. Angle A, L, E is congruent, has equal measure to angle D, L, P. If you started with the pink angle, you've got to start with the pink angle. That's why I started with D and not P. D, L, P. They are congruent because they are vertical angles. The triangles at right are similar. Solve for x. <gasps> OMG, they didn't give us a similarity statement, but we do have some symbolism on the triangles, so let's try to use that to help us determine which sides correspond with which. First, we'll start with the angles. It might be the easiest to determine that the angle x corresponds to angle p because they're both right angles. Next, I see angle Q has one arc, so that's going to match the angle on this triangle that has one arc. That's angle Z. 
and angle R on this triangle has two arcs. So that will correspond to angle Y on this triangle, which also has two arcs. Now this will help me determine which sides are corresponding. So the side that is between the pink and blue angles, that's going to correspond to the side between the pink and blue angles on this one. The side between pink and purple corresponds to the side between pink and purple. The side between blue and purple, this one will correspond to the side that's between the blue and purple angles on this triangle. I do like to do the pattern of big over small. So I look and I see that this side is 28, but this green side is 21. So in case you couldn't tell, the triangle on the right is bigger than the triangle on the left. Green over green. This will be how I set up my proportion because I know the ratio of the corresponding sides is equal. Now I pick the 7x over its corresponding side, which is 5x plus 2. And that is equal to, notice how the yellow side on both triangles does not have a measure. Well, fortunately, we don't need it to have a measure because we only need one pair of corresponding sides in order to help us solve. What do you do, though, when you have a group? When you cross multiply, be very careful because you're going to have to distribute. So anytime you see a plus or a minus as part of your side length, make sure you put that grouping in parentheses. It's very important for when we cross multiply. Remember, cross multiplication is numerator times denominator equals your other denominator times your other numerator. When we distribute 28, we get 140x plus 56 equals... 147x. Oh, now we have x's on both sides, so we want to get them on the same side. So we're going to subtract 140x, and now we have x is equal to 8. In order to check your answer, we want to make sure that truly that x equals 8 does give us the same ratio as the other corresponding sides ratio. So 7 goes into 28 four times, and 7 goes into 21 three times. Um, 56 over 4. 3 divided by 21 is 4 divided by 3 because 7 goes into 8 of those. Then you've got 56 over 40 plus 2. Can you reduce 56 over 42? When you divide the numerator and the denominator by 14, you get 4 over 3. Yay! I think we're 8 in our end. Here we have an example of overlapping triangles. So the first thing we're going to do is draw them as two separate triangles. I'm going to take the big triangle and copy it down. That's A, B, C. Now this length is 18. What is this length? Hmm. Well, it's 16 plus 8 because this piece is 16 and this piece is 8. So this will be 24. What about this side? I don't see a side length over there, so I think that's all we're, we've been given. Now you're going to draw this smaller triangle over here. Now interpret your similarity statement to determine which angles correspond and which sides correspond. Alright, so the side between the pink and purple angles corresponds to the side between the pink and purple. The side between purple and blue corresponds to purple and blue. And you notice that this third side does correspond with this third side, but it doesn't give me any measures. It's not going to be relevant when I'm making my proportion. All right, I like to do big over small, so I'm going to start with the numbers that I know, and then I'll set up my corresponding ratio with the x. All right, 24 over 8 is equal to 18 over x. All right, it's time to cross multiply. If you weren't given the similarity statement, would you still know that all three angles are congruent? That's a very interesting question. First of all, angle B is angle B, so they are going to be equal. That's called a shared angle. So each of these triangles shares angle B. But angle A, how do I know that that is congruent to angle B, D, E? 
Well, if you noticed, there were these parallel markings. So we have parallel lines. What are these angles then? This angle relationship is corresponding. This angle relationship is corresponding. So when the lines are parallel, the corresponding angles are congruent. In conclusion, similar shapes have congruent angles and corresponding side ratios are equal.